I've gone to school a lot of times. And, and, it, and this, this, it just seems like no matter how much knowledge I gain, I just still can't fathom and come up in my mind with a word that would describe my God because it just doesn't seem like good is, is, is good enough. Great is not good enough. Money is not good enough. It just doesn't, like there's not a word to describe the goodness of my God. But one thing I know for sure is that my God is faithful. He's faithful. He never lets us down. He never disappoints. He is faithful. There's nothing that he cannot do. He's faithful. There's nothing good that he was was home from us because he's faithful. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord on today? Hallelujah. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. We welcome all of you here, all of the bodies that I see right here in this sanctuary. God bless you for your faithfulness in coming to the house of the Lord. God bless you for being obedient to the Spirit of God when he told you to get up and go to PGC. God bless you. And God bless all of those who are watching on Facebook. We love you. On YouTube, we love you. We're so glad that you are being a part of this body by watching and tuning in. We welcome you in. And we pray that God will have his way in your life. We pray that you will praise him with an abandonment. Not worrying about even if you were just at home in the car. It doesn't matter. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. For he's worthy. Hallelujah. At this time, the deacons will come and read our scripture for today. Amen. Amen. If you are able, we're going to ask that you stand this morning in the reverence of God's word. And we're going to be reading it from 2 Corinthians 12th chapter, 2nd to the 7th verse. I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside my body. But I do know that I was caught up to paradise and, and heard things so astonishing that they can't be expressed in words, things no human is allowed to tell, that experience is, is worth boasted about. But I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about my weakness. If I wanted to boast, I, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. But I won't do it because I don't want anybody to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. Even though I have received such wonderful revelation from God. I read 2 Corinthians 12th chapter Second down to the seventh verse, God word for God people.
mercy, knowing that it's already done. Already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can believe on his promises. That's right. We don't, it, God's not like man. Sometimes he may keep his word and sometimes he won't. God is a man of his word, is that song we sing, say. He's a God of his word. He won't ever let us down, won't ever fail. So we can rely on him, we can lean on him. We can count on him. Because he's never going to let us fall, he won't let us down. And it's already done. That should just be such a great assurance if when you're going through. You know, if you're here and you're just like, oh, but I just got this. But you know what? It's okay because God said it's already done. But but you don't know what I'm going to know. It's okay because God said it's already done. Already done. Man. It's already done. Don't have to put a smile on your face. I see you back there, baby. You got that big smile on your face. It's already done. Right? So everybody just say hallelujah. It's already done. It's already done. Done. That sickness is already done. That job that you it's already done. Oh, that marriage is already done. Y'all just hang in there. Trust in God. Trust in him. Because he's faithful. Oh, he's so faithful. He's faithful.
your body yeah. and your blood you've shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. There's a table that you prepared for me. Yeah. And I believe you've overcome. 
darkness around me is just a shadow underneath your wings. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, I know that you are with me. Yeah. My victory. at the name of Jesus. Huh? Addictions are defeated at the name of Jesus. Is there anything too hard for God? I'm talking to somebody today. 
somebody is feeling defeated right now, but you need to know that nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. No matter what you're going through, if you can have faith to believe and faith to receive, at the name of Jesus. Sometimes in my life when I'm going through, sometimes, you know, I'm a problem solver and I like to come up with solutions, but sometimes I don't know what the solution is because sometimes I don't even understand the problem. But I just call on Jesus. I just say his name, Jesus. Jesus. And somehow or another, when I just say the name Jesus, that's enough. The Spirit puts my, my heart's cry into words that I cannot utter. And the Father hears me in his own time, in his own way. He comes through and he delivers. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Children, church is open in the back. Amen. Children, church is open in the back. Amen. Good morning, Pine Grove. It's good to see you. And you're looking fine. Amen. We do welcome you this morning to PGC and to those here in the audience and to those who are uh, watching this morning on Facebook or YouTube. We, we welcome you as well. Maybe somebody will pick us up in the days and, and the years to come. And, uh, this is a word for you this morning. We, we're blessed to be here. We, we trust that you've had a good week. And uh, like me, you, you've been goofing off and you've gotten all tired and sunburned. But it, it's good to be here this morning. Amen. Hope you had a good 4th of July. But God was so good to give us today. And so we thank him for that. And we give reverence to Pastor uh, uh, Jackson, to Minister Leandra, Minister Tanya, Minister Monica, Minister Tammy, amen, to all the preachers of the gospel, amen, and to all our uh, officers and to everybody here, we say good morning. We're blessed this morning to, to have with us a, a guest speaker this, this morning. As I was uh, working on, on my message, and I, I, the Spirit said, no, <laughs> This is a message, but it's not for tomorrow. Amen. I was just working for it on it, and uh, uh, I was just led by the Spirit this morning to to be obedient, and and I've learned that we got to be obedient. Amen. And so we're blessed this morning. We are we are blessed to have a guest speaker, uh, none other than Minister Victor Wyatt. Victor Wyatt. He is an Amen, amen. Give God some praise, amen. He is uh, an associate minister at the Beulah Primitive Baptist Church in Lowndes County and under the uh, pastorship of my good friend, Pastor Tom Gardner III, amen. Amen. And... Um, Mr. Wyatt uh, is, is not really a stranger to us. He's been here at Pine Grove before uh, because he has connection to Pine Grove, amen? Uh, he's part of the Pine Grove family kind of by extension. Uh, he is uh, newly engaged to one of our members, uh-huh, Shaquana Townsend. Where are you, Shaquana? Uh, 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 come on now. Of the eye. <laughs> and so we are blessed and doubly blessed this morning to have with us to bring the word of life, Minister Victor Wyatt. Hear ye the man of God as he breaks the word of life. Now, don't you sit down on the preacher this morning. Amen. Anybody here know how to say amen? amen. All right. Come on, preacher man. Amen. God bless you, sir. Shine on me, shine on, on me, I want 
house, Dr. Hamilton, to my pastor, uh, Elder Gardner at home, and to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, now that some protocol has been established and I have learned a few things in the 18 years of ministry, if you don't mind, I'm going to take my shoes off as I understand I'm standing in and on hallowed ground, so if that's okay with you. Now, if you have your Bible with you and on the screen, and I ask that they advance the screens as I read, uh, I'm going to go to Genesis, the 39th chapter, and I'm going to start at the 11th verse. Now, I'm going to say, sometimes I have a tendency to speak fast. I don't hold people long. I try to hit it and quit it and be done. But you'll find these words written, and it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass, when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her unto his Lord came home. And he spake unto me according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard these words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him. And put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Sermon for this morning, for a few minutes, I want to talk about the lie will elevate you. The lie will elevate you. I uh, was sitting down Friday to and actually was just writing this sermon, and I just had started writing it. And then Dr. Hamilton texted me last night and said, do you think you have a word for tomorrow morning? And I said, well, I got one in the book, I've got one in my mind, and I've got one in my heart, as I have been trained to do. And then as I had was writing on Friday, 
I, I got my first confirmation as Shaquan and I were having a conversation, and I shared with her what I was writing about, and then he texted me last night, and then this morning, the last song before I get up confirmed it even more. So let's get into this. The lie will elevate you. How many of you have ever been lied on? How many of us has had your character tarnished and trampled on because you wouldn't do what someone else wanted you to do? How often do you have to think to yourself about the times you've been thrown under the bus only to come out unscathed? Now, at this point in the scripture for today, Joseph has been sold into slavery because his brothers conspired against him. They lied on him because of his dreams. They had thrown him into a pit, and instead of killing him, they sold him into slavery. And he ended up where we find him today. Understand that when you are blessed, when you are touched divinely by God, folks are going to do things to you because they don't want to see you thrive. They don't want to see you prosper more than they are. They want you to stay mediocre. They want you to stay destitute. They want you to lose your shine when you're meant to shine bright like a diamond, such as Rihanna said. Don't worry when they begin to do this to you because whether whatever lies they tell on you, whatever evil they speak up against you is only going to elevate you. Now, at this point in our scripture, we find Joseph in charge of an Egyptian man's household because God had provided favor over him. But that favor, when it is seen by those who desire, again, to have what you have for themselves, they're going to lie to get what they want or what you have because they couldn't get close to you to feel what you have. Now, by this point, Potiphar's wife saw how Joseph looked. She saw what he had. She saw what he looked like. He looked like a Denzel Washington. He looked like an Idris Elba. He looked like, for the men, let me get you something for you. He looked like a Beyonce, a Janet Jackson, a young Diana Ross. Joseph looked good. I mean, I can relate. But something I want you to notice here for just a few moments about Potiphar's wife, she never was named. Don't you find that kind of interesting? This woman who made it possible to save all of Israel from famine and death, was never named. This woman took it upon herself to try and seduce a man and lied on him to her husband, getting him thrown in jail, but was never named. Now, if you go back and look, there's a lot of people in the Bible uh, who we talk about them all the time, but uh, they're never named. Significant people, no name. But that's a sermon for another day. But back to this scripture, we find Joseph thrown in jail. And as you continue to read in the chapter and in the following chapter, Joseph still had favor over his life continuously. Remember, the lie will elevate you. Joseph was doing so well in prison that he was remembered by those under him when they were released. Joseph, having the gift of interpretation, saved him even more when he interpreted the Pharaoh's dream because the chief butler who the Pharaoh had imprisoned and released remembered Joseph and said, hey, there's somebody back there that can tell him what these dreams mean. The elevation was still happening. Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dreams as seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And so Pharaoh elevated him even higher to be over all of Egypt, and that was underneath Pharaoh. And when the time came for his brothers to come down to Egypt to get food for their families, by the time the famine had come, Joseph had created and maintained storehouses to save all of Egypt. His elevation was still coming from when his brothers came unto him. They didn't recognize Joseph. They didn't recognize their own flesh and blood. But he remembered them. You're always going to remember the person that lied on you. You're going to remember the face of the person that did you wrong. You're going to remember the person that said, oh, he ain't all that in a bag of chips when you know you are. He sent him back, though, to get their father. Because he said, no, I'm about to show y'all who I am. Joseph was lied on by his brothers. He was lied on by Potiphar's wife. But the lie elevated him up. Your elevation is coming. 
You've been praying, you've been fasting, you've been faithful to God at all that you are doing, and someone's been lying on you. But what they have to understand and what they don't understand is that the lies they are telling only elevate you higher and higher than you already are. Now I'm going to take a minute here. I'm going to share some of the haters you're going to encounter in life. You might have heard of them. They're all members of the fame, same family, and they're all members in your church. I'm not saying they may be here at Pine Grove. I'm not saying they're at Beulah, but they're all members in the church. Now, first, in this family, there's, there's the daddy, brother, dictator. I, I heard another preacher talk about this one day. He's the self-appointed ruler who feels everything should be done his way. He never serves or works. He bosses everybody else around. Then you have the mama's sister imitator. She's the member of the family who follows all the latest fads. She's never really discovered her own identity because she's always busy trying to be like somebody else. But after mama and daddy, uh, you got their kids. First, you got the oldest child, brother hesitator. When Hezzy asks to help the church, when he gets asked, he knows he should, but uh, he always puts it off. He's sure he'll get around to serving God someday. Then you got their daughter, sister, Carmen Tater. Carmen has an opinion about everything, and you never need to ask her what she thinks because she's going to be the first one to tell you. Pretty sure she's given pastor a call once or twice. Then she has a husband, the son-in-law, brother Spectator. He, 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 his favorite phrase is, I love work. I can watch others do it for hours. He doesn't get involved, but he's a great observer. No, a little convicted there. I've been brother spectator every once in a while. But worst of all in the family, worst of all, is baby girl, sister agitator. When Aggie was in school, she put she got poor marks and plays well with others. Aggie is continually in conflict with others and seems to always be involved in strife and always in division and always in problems. No matter what the pastor or the church does or says, she's always causing and stirring up all kinds of trouble. And nothing is ever good in her eyes but my brothers and my sisters. I want to tell you there is one member of the family that we have in the church, and we all love this sister, and we love to see her come, and that sister, Sweet Tater. You see, when Sister Sweet Tater comes, she's, she's cordial and she's cooperative. She, 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 she's the ideal member of the church. She has a great attitude. She's faithful, committed, supportive, and involved. She doesn't dictate, imitate, hesitate, commentate, spectate, or agitate. She's nothing like her family. Listen, folks, let folks talk about you. Let them say what they want to say about you. Let them lie on you. Let them do whatever they want to do. But like grandma used to say, it's not what folks call you, it's what you answer to. That old time wisdom sounded so simple, but it was so profound. It's not what folks call you, it's what you answer to. The lie will elevate you. I'm not much much far from being done. Vicki Winans uh, sang a song, well, I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated. I've been used, scorned, talked about, sore as a bone. I've been up, down, almost to the ground. But as long as I got King Jesus, as long as I got, as long, long, long as I got him, I don't need nobody else. You don't need anybody else as long as you've got King Jesus. Now, let me go back and grab a few gospel truths for you. I always got to go back and get a witness or two here for you. Uh, I'll start with myself, actually. And I left the job with no prospects recently. I gave a 60-day notice in April. Told these folks, I'm done. Y'all have ticked me off for the last time. And they decided, we're going to pay you out the rest of your salary three weeks before your end date. And I know folks lied on me. I know folks talked about me. Uh, I know they said all kinds of things about what I did or didn't do, how I did or didn't do my job, but everything they said only works to elevate me. Now I'm going to start a new job tomorrow. 
someone's lie is about to elevate me. Now, go back and look at David. Uh, someone lied about him. Someone talked about him. Someone wanted to kill him because he had favor over his life. But God used all of that to elevate David to where he was. Lies don't have to be words or said about you. They can be actions said and done against you. Actions at times speak louder than words. And those actions can elevate you too. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Let me uh, take a preacher's prerogative with that. Yea, the folks have lied on me. Yea, the folks have kept talking about me. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You put blessing after blessing on a table in front of me. You keep blessing me day after day. You have kept me through dangers seen and unseen. You anoint me with brand new mercies each and every morning. And my blessings have run over so much, I have to add new account after new account. You've blessed me so abundantly above all that I could think or ask according to the power that works within me so surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord goodness and mercy have kept me they have sustained me somebody lied on me I lost two jobs behind some lies but I still got elevated God has elevated me only so much higher whether it's financial or whether it's a status elevation the lie will elevate you you know I feel like preaching just for another minute or two you know Jesus came down through 40 and 2 generations and folks lied on him all the way still he was born of a virgin and they lied on her but Joseph put a stop to it now he was eight days old and circumcised 12 years old in the temple teaching now at 30 years old you know he went out to the river and got baptized and John baptized him but his father certified him now I just want to keep going for just a few more minutes folks lied on Jesus over and over again when one Thursday they took him from judgment house to judgment house and lied on him behind him every single step of the way but I want to tell you that the lies they said only elevated him further and higher than he already was. If you take a few minutes and think about it, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. The lies will elevate you. Don't care what the haters say about you. Don't care what they talk about you, what they do to you. The lie will elevate you. Be faithful to God. Know that he will answer every one of your prayers. You ain't got to worry. You ain't got to stress because God will elevate you. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Every lie they talking about you right now outside. God will elevate you. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't care what them folks say. Folks talk on me all the time. But talking about me since I was five years old. But the lies they said, they will say, will elevate me. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Anybody been lied on? But when the master knows the truth, when God knows the truth, the truth will stand. It will speak for itself. Huh? If they lie on Jesus, then you know they're going to lie on us. But God is in the business of elevating above all the noise, above all the untruth. And God will put you where he will have you to be. And when God elevates you, there's nobody that can bring you down. Now, if you elevate yourself, somebody else can bring you down. But if God elevates you, oh, you're in good shape. 
We thank God this morning for Minister Wyatt and for the word of God this morning. Amen. I got a feeling this morning that there's somebody in this low place because you've started believing the lies. They said that you're no good. You've never been any good and you'll never be any good. They've said that you're not worthy of being loved. That you're not worthy of being saved. But that's a lie. Because the preacher said that there was a man that died for you. Just like he died for me. For somebody like me that all my life I, I, I've struggled with insecurities. The boy who could not talk. It's hard. But to know that God loves me. Just the way he made me. Somebody here this morning needs to know that, that God made you the way he made you. With all your perfect imperfections. He wants to save you. He wants you to come. With your baggage. I know you, you feel like you need to get rid of that stuff first but you can't because without him you can't get it right he wants you to come there's a chair right here for you it has your name on it we said God everybody talking about me <laughs> some have turned their backs on me but that old preacher said that you will never do that because you love me with an everlasting love. Will you come this morning? Will you surrender? Will you give in? Will you give it over to God and let him save you? The doors are open and this chair is for you. Come on, praise team. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God some praise in the house. My God loves me. And all the days of my life, he's loved me. He's never not loved me. If I live to be 100, he'll still love me the same. If I mess up, if I falter, if I fail, if they put my name on the signing board, he'll still love me. He'll always love me the same. He'll never stop. And he'll never stop loving you. I don't care how much you mess up in life, he'll never stop loving you. Who are you? This chair is for you. You ought to come.
father, you're a good father, God. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. Even when we don't deserve it, God. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. again for that word this morning. Give God the praise for the word. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to live what the enemy does to you. Elevate you. Don't give him the satisfaction of being knocked down. <laughs> Put it on your feet and use it as a stepping stone. Huh? That's what Christ did all the way to Calvary. Amen. The Bible commands us to remember what Christ did, to remember his death, his burial, and resurrection. We invite you now to come and join us in this holy time of communion. All our ministers and all of our officers, will you come now? Come and join us as we partake of the Holy Communion. Come on, preacher. Amen. Here at Pine Grove, we do have an open table, and you don't have to be Baptist, you don't have to be Methodist, you don't have to be Episcopalian. <laughs> you got to be a believer in Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Glory. The 
Bible says that on that on that Thursday night they're having that last meal with his disciples Jesus took bread and he broke it and he and he blessed it this time we're going to ask uh, Deacon Floyd to ask God to to bless the bread and the wine our Father in heaven, we come before you right now, Lord. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we just want to say thank you for all that you're doing for us, Lord. Lord, even, in all, even when we don't know what you're doing, Lord, we still thank you. Lord, we ask that you just bless this moment right now that you prepared before us, Lord, that you asked to do in remembrance of your name, Lord. We'd like to ask you to bless the bread that's been broken, Lord, in your name. Lord, we'd like to ask you that we that you cover the wine that we drink. That's, rep, that's in representation of your blood, Lord. We just ask you to just cover us all, Lord. Whatever we're going through right now, Lord, in this moment, we ask that as we take the sacrament of your body, Lord, that whatever we're going through, we let it go, Lord. Let you have it, Lord. We can do it, Lord. So we just ask all these things in your son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.
says that Jesus took the bread and having uh, broken it, he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do you in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. He said the cup is the New Testament of his blood. And this do you as often as ye drink it, and we remember of him. For as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we show forth his death, burial, and resurrection till he comes again. Let's drink together. Hallelujah. 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 Death could not calm you down. Give God some praise in the house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for what he has done and what he is still doing on behalf of his children. Amen. 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 I know it's time to go just about, but oh, I'm having such a good time. I almost don't want to go. <laughs> We'll be a benefit program for Pastor Jonathan Temple, who is battling illness, and he needs your prayers. Y'all pray him up before the Father's throne. But don't just pray. Uh, come out on July the 14th, that's next Sunday, 2.30, up here at D.C. Wolf, uh, for a benefit program on his behalf. All groups and soloists are welcome on behalf of uh, this preaching man, Jonathan Temple. Amen. 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 Continue to pray for those who are going through. We've had uh, past, uh, Deacon, Deacon Michael Jackson has been in the hospital, and uh, his mother, Sister Mary Jackson, has been in the hospital. He was in the hospital. And um, pray for them. Call them out by name before the Father's throne. Uh, pray for Sister Mary Fitzpatrick right here. She lost her brother and feeling like last him on yesterday. And Mary is here this morning yeah. lifting up praise to God. <laughs> but the thing about sorrow and grief is that it lingers for a long time. So even though the funeral is past, the grief and the sorrow is still there. Y'all lift her up before the Father's throne. The Bible tells us that we ought to comfort one another with the same comfort that we've been comforted with, huh? So as God has brought you through, you come along and walk beside her. Amen? Amen. And that's how we do it. Amen. Amen. Little one? Amen. All right, then. And, uh, maybe some other. Uh, there will be a uh, celebration for uh, Pastor Harris coming up soon. Amen. Pastor Harris, 30 years of pastorship here in our area, and that will be a banquet for, for him coming up soon. Amen. So y'all keep that in mind as well. Amen. Uh, LaDonna reminds me that we have some young ones and we have a presentation. Come on, young ones. Amen. Come on, LaDonna. Amen. I guess the others don't want to come, amen. 
But hey, but these are brave, all right. Amen. We um, we started a new series on today about growing up. We talked about how when we were little, we did some things, and now we don't do those things anymore because we are growing up. So today, we talked about growing up in our feelings, our feelings. And our scripture was Proverbs, Proverbs 4 and 23. It says, guard your hearts because it guides your life. Guard your heart because it guides your life. Right. And we talked about sometimes we have super big emotions and God created us with all kind of feelings like what kind of feelings do we have? Anybody? Happy. Happy. Anxiety. 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 Yes. 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 Say sad. Sad. And sometimes we even get what? Mad. Right? <laughs> God gave us, God created us with all of those emotions. But the word of God tells us that we have to guard our hearts, guard our feelings, manage our feelings. So we learned about a couple of techniques that we can do when we get super duper mad. When we get so mad, we get out of control. So the first one was um, picking lemons. Are y'all ready to do We're going to show how we pick lemons and calm ourselves down? All right. Okay, so we reach up and pick the lemon. We squeeze it. And then we shake it off. All right, and we learn a breathing technique called the finger breathing. All right, y'all ready? Okay, we got to trace our fingers. When we go up, we breathe in. We go down, we breathe out. Go up, breathe in. Go down, breathe out. Go up, breathe in. Somebody say everybody needs, needs to learn that one. Amen. <laughs> learn how to bother that tongue. Amen. <laughs> We've enjoyed this time with all of you. Thank you all for what you're doing with our young ones. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. We do have um, some refreshments in the bag. Deacon Pollard is reminding me that we have not lifted an offering. So if you have not given already, please b b do so. Amen. I don't know why I keep forgetting the offering. Amen. Because that is part of worship. Amen. You can give right now if you have not already given. You can give uh, on uh, our cash, uh, cash app, uh, cash tag PGC shorter dollar sign PGC shorter. You can give on our website at Pine Grove Church uh, PGC. Don't forget the PGC, otherwise it goes to some other Pine Grove. Amen. Pine Grove Church PGC dot com forward slash give. Amen. We do thank you all for your for your generous giving. Amen, because we couldn't do what we do without you. Amen. 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 All hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Let everybody stand. Amen. Let everybody stand.
thank you all for having me this morning. Uh, I, when I came last time, Pastor Daryl told me, he said, next time you come, let me know you're going to preach. I said, okay. So I texted him and said, I'm coming. I'll see you Sunday. He didn't say you're preaching until, until about 9 o'clock last night. <laughs> I said, well, it's a good thing I started working on a sermon yesterday. <laughs> Um, but I thank God for being able to be here. Um, you will see us in and out. Uh, I, of course, have obligations at my church where I serve. I've been in ministry now 18 years. 18 years. So I'm, a, I'm an adult now. Uh, I start picking back on my elders now a little bit more in <laughs> my association. Um, pray for us uh, over at Beulah. We'll be celebrating 134 years of serving God next Sunday. It's our church homecoming and anniversary. And let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come into this house of worship just one more time. We pray that you will give us traveling mercy as we head home on these highways and byways, that you'll keep us safely to be able to come back to this place once again to fellowship in your name. We pray that you'll bless the food that has been prepared for the nourishment of our bodies that will give us the strength to go out into this kingdom of yours and serve the people of you. Father God, we pray that you'll bless this offering that will be used to uplift and edify your kingdom here at Pine Grove. We pray the blessings over the past pastor of this church, that you'll continuously strengthen him and keep him in all that he does, keep his wife, keep his family, and Father God, watch over this entire church family and everything that they do in your name. We pray these blessings in your son Jesus' name, that Father God, I say the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let all that are under my voice sing, Amen.